Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I am your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and we're back for another delectable mobile game review, taking a look at Defend Your Life by Ald Games, a lovely game studio out of the middle of Europe and uh, sort of up north in the frozen tundra -y area, and they have created a lovely tower defense game that takes us into the um, interstitial organy parts of the human body to defend it against a microbial menace, such as the influenza virus and uh, things like rabies and bacteria and rocks and coins and stuff. Uh, in sort of an environment that you would imagine from, like, Osmosis Jones, where cute little cartoony characters run around in a sort of real life uh, organ tunnels of the body to uh, defend it. So let's just jump in here and take a look. I think we'll start off our adventures over here in the left lung. And we'll just set it to standard and jump in and have an adventure. And of course, we do have some upgrades that I have been uh, intentionally avoiding so that I can show you guys. So we'll actually just ignore that and jump right in here. Alrighty, here we are inside of the left lung in our fantastical bearded spaceman adventurer pal has informed us that there are some extra little building platforms in here that we can purchase in order to uh, expand our uh, artillery forces. But I'm not quite so concerned with purchasing um, too many of these right now. What we're going to do inside of this lovely, lovely illustrated environment of the lungs, look, there's like little tubes where the air comes through and then there's little bubbles of oxygen. It's kind of cool. I like it. But... You know, there, there's been a there's been an incursion here, and these fellas are trying to reconstruct this part of the lung, and they need protection while we while we get everything back up in ship shape. So to that effect, we're gonna jump right here in the center, and we're gonna set up what I like to call uh, a kill zone, because as you see, we've got this little arrowed line that takes us from the bottom to the upper right, and that's where the enemies are going to come from. So we're gonna come over here, and we're gonna set up a police kiosk. Couple of little uh, platelet fellas here. These are platelet defenders with their little their cute little shields. We're gonna come uh, stop any folks that are trying to mosey on through here. And then to help them out, we're going to, on either side of the street, we're gonna put a gigantic cannon. I feel like that's a good uh, dissuasive factor. I find people are less likely to be spicy with you uh, if you point a giant medieval cannon at their face. Who would have thunk it? And then, just for good measure, we're going to turn this one into a super high-powered howitzer machine gun. Just just for good measure. Then we'll come over here, where this little f evil, sinister, frowny uh, virus is, and we will just spawn him into the world. And first we get a little, uh, these little microbial worm guys, followed by some... Now I can't remember the name of the blue guys, but these suckers, they're annoying. But they're not too... Troublesome. Our cute little cannon should be able to do a number on them. And, you know, it, it's starting to shape up and feel like a good old-fashioned, very comfortable, very familiar tower defense game. And I gotta say, I've been really enjoying how every last one of these little characters has got their own unique personality and their own unique traits as they sort of relate to real-world viruses. And then to help us, because we're... We could easily get uh, overwhelmed. We've got some abilities here in the lower right, such as a gigantic Tesla shock. As you know, the body is coursing with small amounts of minute electricity, and uh, our soldiers have learned how to harness it as a deadly weapon. Then we've also got these little bombs, which we can just throw out there, some TNT and uh, sporadically kill them. And while those are recharging, we've also got, which you get a little bit later in the game, but I've brought back for you guys to see, we get this little fella up here. Our little platelet general who rides a little stick horse into battle and thwaps people with his gigantic nerf foam sword. He's real handy. And as he kills things, he levels up. And he's only level 8 right now because I felt I should... Rewind a little bit and reset all of my upgrades and stuff uh, by resetting the game installation. So our job is to make sure that none of these little spicy suckers gets past us 
into the uh, the lower bowels and stuff of the stomach, because that could make us sick. And you know, the last time there was a bowel obstruction, you know, the the intestinal congress got really spicy. There was an inquiry, and I didn't look very good in front of that uh, that board that was interviewing me. So we're just gonna try and avoid that this time around. So we're on wave six of eighteen. Doing pretty well so far, and now we get to see the flu virus. Yes, these little spicy buggers that kind of look like a sick clown mixed with a dog. Uh, when you shoot them and you murder them, they split into two smaller influenza viruses. And if you're not really careful, they can quickly overwhelm you with uh, shenanigans. So I'm going to quickly take up all of these oxygen units, these little bubbles here in the upper left corner. And I'm going to upgrade my units so that we don't get overwhelmed. Because that's that's the goal of those little influenzas. They like to come at you in like groups of five, and then try to just uh, blitz through your defenses. And uh-oh, we've got little nicotine soldiers. Little um, sinister pirates, as it were. And when I hit them, well, I'll show you in a minute when more of them come, but those little blue guys with the little pirate swashbuckling rapiers, um, they will sneak past you because once you hit them the first time, and if that first hit doesn't kill them, they turn invisible. So there's all sorts of little sort of creatures and critters that can really challenge you to set up uh, thoughtful defenses to defend against all of them. So here we get some more influenza viruses, and I'm going to skip ahead to the next wave. So an easy way to get some extra currency, and I'm actually going to start creating some additional defenses back here, including another um, secondary fortification with these platelets as my secondary kill box. Alright, how are we doing over here? Oh wow, we have got our work cut out for us here. So what I meant by overrunning is... These little fellas here, these uh, these feisty constables who have got like a bat or a, a nightstick there, um, they only can take on one enemy at a time, and I'm actually going to call back my general to the second line of defense here and show you exactly what I mean. So here we got those little nicotine uh, pirate swashbucklers. They go invisible for a period of time, trying to get past my defenses, but they should appear... Right about, uh, I guess back here. It's not terrible, I guess. We'll just add a couple more murder towers for all the ones that have snuck past me. But as you can see, if you don't pay attention, things like that can really easily run the blockade and cause some problems for you. So I'm actually going to just zap this next line of them so they're less likely to sneak past me while I'm giving my lovely review. And we'll see uh, the influenza virus give birth and get murdered. So I guess we'll talk about the different kinds of towers. So I told you about this little um, guard post here in the center. It's, uh, it's basically a police kiosk. And they come out and they prevent riots and violence and invasions by foreign parasites. Then we have these cannons. And these cannons can evolve into... One of two things. You see these lovely machine gun howitzers here, and they will attack whatever has the lowest health. They are designed to just mop up enemies and make it very easy to kind of uh, clean up after whatever other towers are in the vicinity doing the things. And then you've got these Tesla cannons, these Tesla towers, and their job down here is they zap the big scary monsters or whatever monster near them has got the most health, and their job is to nuke down big scary things like those influenza viruses. Oh wow, yeah, and here here they're coming in full force to try and overwhelm our first uh, stage of defensive turrets, so we're gonna actually add another howitzer machine gun. And so you start to see and uh, explore the different kinds of towers, and pretty much every tower in this game uh, even this little windmill here that provides us with uh, bonus oxygen, they all can be upgraded to do more damage, to provide different utility perks and stats and stuff. And 
just do their job better, and I love that. That's the kind of stuff I love in tower defense games. You know, you got a place to go, you've got different strategies that you can exploit with different types of weapons and using them in different combinations and different tiers of sophistication, and that's really what it, what makes for a great tower defense game. Now, we're still early in the game. You know, things are quite simple here. We've only got a few different critters to worry about. But it quickly gets to the point where you, you start to see a challenge, because these first levels, like in any tower defense game, are there to teach you the ropes, so you don't get too overwhelmed, so you understand all the mechanics, but it doesn't take you through a rigid uh, explanation either. Just like that old man in the side was showing us, uh, that a crazy bearded uh, gentleman from Norway, I think. He's a Norwegian spaceman. Um, he just, they sort of present you with uh, one or two different mechanics, the fact that certain towers can be upgraded or not, uh, one by one. And they even show you how the in-game monetization works, because Defend Your Life is a free title, but uh, it is monetized through the shop, which can be a little bit of a help to you, an aid to your adventures, but it's not uh, pay to win at the same time, or at least not permanently. You only get limited time perks that you can use off and on in the game to kind of help you out if you get stuck. So we'll go over that after we're done with this level. So we're on wave 18 out of 18, and we're just going to get blitzed by a whole bunch of really spicy looking critters. So I'm going to buy this last little defensive point, and uh, I'll tell these little platelets where to go. So normally they just go wherever is closest to them in the roadway, but I'm going to want to tell them with this little foot, let's just go a little bit closer to the edge of your uh, spawning vicinity and set up shop as policemen so that you're a little bit closer to the towers because, you know, towers have got limited range. And that's another thing I really enjoyed was being able to reposition the towers like this where they have little minions or they have a little targeted area repositioning its targeted area so that it's exactly pinpoint where you want your defenses and that is really cool you don't see that in a lot of different uh tower defense games so we're starting to get uh the influenzas have broken past our our primary blockade which is the whole reason why we built our secondary and third blockades so that if they decide to just blitz it to the exit, they're uh, going to get confronted by not one, not two, but three rounds of dangerous constables. And then we win, and we get these three little um, pill tokens, golden pills, and 74 diamonds with which we can purchase upgrades and uh, additional perks. Okay, so now that we've gotten a little taste for the mechanics of Defend Your Life, we're going to go into the upgrade shop over here in the left. And this allows us to upgrade different things. So first we've got, we can increase the attack damage and range of our towers. We can increase the sale value of buildings if we decide to resell anything that we've built already because we've changed our mind. You know, if we decide to change our tactics on the fly a lot, that might be a helpful perk. And then down here we can get an increase in our monetary compensation for our services. I don't know about you, but when I'm out working up an appetite and a sweat murdering influenza viruses and other microbes, I, I like to be well compensated for my time and my risk to health, life, and, um, you know, chromosomal limb. And then we've got some other perks up here. So we've got this bomb ability, and I've upgraded it to the dynamite, the time bomb dynamite. But what I'm thinking is I would really like it if I could get uh, uh, some some nuclear capabilities on my team. So we can upgrade to the nuclear bomb, and these basically increase by order of magnitude, but I think this is probably like five times more dangerous than the, the just the plain dynamite. So we'll grab that, and that's one of our side abilities that doesn't directly relate to our towers. And then what else do I think? So we've got this lightning shock ability, which just does a massive AoE uh, ability or effect to everything on the screen, and I've upgraded it to the second tier, which increases my attack damage dealt by shock by 
And I can also increase that to 100% increase in its damage. And then down here, we've got uh, our injection, and I'm not 100% certain what injection does, but it buffs your towers, they attack a little bit harder, and they attack a little faster. And I think, don't quote me on this, but I think it increases your effective range of the towers that you inject with it. It's all very useful, but I don't, I don't use inject nearly as much as I use the other two. So I'm thinking we're going to spend the rest of our money down here on upgrading our oxygen. So this one increases the oxygen profit from each killed unit by uh, 10%. Or we can increase the production of oxygen generators by 10%. And those are those little windmills. But I think we'll do um, more reward for murdering the things. And that pretty much... I guess we can upgrade the injection as well. That pretty much covers our upgrades for our different sorts of uh, abilities. And passive stats like getting us more money. So now the question that I think a lot of people are curious about when they approach mobile games that are free to play is, how exactly is Alden Games making back their money? Because I, there's no ads in here, which is nice. I Very often I feel over-advertised too. But let's jump into the shop. So the shop offers us some limited time bonuses. So I can get uh, some extra oxygen. So, I, you know, I'll pop this at the start of the of combat. This will give me 400 extra money in the combat phase to work with. I can increase my hit points by five. I can get a little golem that goes around as a rock'em sock'em robot murdering things. Or I can get power charges, which uh, resets my cooldowns of all my abilities. Or I can get Adrenaline Addiction, which applies Adrenaline to all my buildings. But I'm going to show you... Maybe I'll show you something. So I'll grab some extra um, Oxygen. That sounds good. And I'll grab an Ability Reset. You know what? I'll grab, I'll grab like three of those. There we are. That's good. And then, what the heck? Let's increase our hit points by an increment. We'll spend the rest on more Ability Resets. And so that's pretty much how they um, they monetize this game. If I click the More Gems button here in the upper right, that's when I would give them more money via microtransactions so that I can get a little bit more diamonds if I'm having trouble with the game, playing on higher difficulties to maybe get that leg up temporarily to get further in. But none of those, none of these are permanent. These are one-time use, so it's not really pay to win. It's pay for bonus for like a little bit of leg up on the on on a level but i think that i'm pretty sure that those bonuses factor into your score because you had to use them so i think that's a pretty fair way to monetize a game so that's something that's really cool and so the third thing we'll take a look at here is our heroes that little general guy platelets general he's got a bunch of levels which means i've got 7 points that i can buff him with and these are like your secondary uh, tower champions. You know, these are little dudes that you can send to wherever you need, like, a reinforcement in the line of defenses to quickly plug the gap and prevent enemies from getting through. And they all do something a little differently. The Platelet General and his little uh, horse dog on a stick there, he just kind of flaps things in the, in the face, and I'll actually increase his stats a little bit here, increase his health and his damage. But you can also get these other champions for more of the in-game currency. This is something else you might spend some cash on. You can get micro Microless. Microoculus. And uh, this guy, as you can see here in the picture, he's got a Tesla cannon on his head. He's got one eye. And he runs around with suction cups. And I can only assume he does a tremendous amount of damage to really big, nasty characters. And then we've got Terminator, who is a, a flying unit with laser guns, who I imagine is a machine gun howitzer that flies across terrain instead of just through the lane. And then we've got Lumberjack, uh, Jimmy Platelet, and he probably just axes things in the face with his chainsaw. Sounds perfectly reasonable, and you can kind of mix and match these characters as you like with in-game currency as sort of another way for them to make cash and to give you an extra utility unit. So I think, what will we do? Um, small intestine might be good. Yeah, let's jump into the small intestine for the next one. We'll jump in here for the regular game modes, but there are 
three levels of difficulty to each one of these maps that change the way that the monsters behave and your sort of um, limitations for how you build your towers and so forth. And here is our spaceman friend once again, floating around with his beard sticking out of his helmet, letting us know that it is entirely possible, no matter what level you are, to um, upgrade your little towers, or your oxygen generators in this case. And these oxygen generators are really nice because they give you 20 extra um, currency every 10 seconds. And I believe that's only during combat phases, so I can't just sit here in build phase waiting till I have a bazillion um, fun oxygen bucks in order to build a bajillion towers. So, the nice thing about this level is they provide us with a lovely little highly clustered um, tower building zone that I will use to make my murder kill box. So I'll stick a uh, platelet's barracks right here and immediately upgrade it. And I'll tell them to hoof it just a little bit further back here. Closer to where I'm going to have a cluster of towers. The second thing I'm going to do is I am going to build... Oh, I think I'll build... Yeah, I'll build a, a mortar tower, a bombardment tower. And this weird little... What looks like a oil drum slapped into the ground is actually a cannon that shoots up into the air. Giant explosive mortar. And then when it comes crashing back down to the ground, it does a massive amount of AoE damage. And then we'll stick some supporting towers here of cannons, including one back here. And this one back here I'm reserving as the lightning tower once we get a little bit more currency. And then the last thing I think I'll do is I'll stick another mortar tower right here in which we can do the thing. And actually I've got a little bit more currency, so let's slap... Oh, I don't know, let's stick a... Uh, a shooty tower right here. Another cannon? Yeah, another cannon sounds good. And we are ready to go. Now you're probably thinking, Larry, why didn't you just stick a tower right here in the center of this little segment? It seems like the perfect place. Oh, and these are the... Remember those little green worm guys? In this level, they have actually upgraded to um, Angina Pro. And the Pro versions have upgraded themselves. The Angina which are the little green wormies, have built jetpack robot propulsion systems. So now they're all super spicy. Look at that. And then these are... These are the Cold Virus Pro. And the Cold Virus Pro... I'll give them credit. They're at least a little bit ingenuitous, but unlike the Angina, rather than developing some sort of advanced floating technology, uh, they just put on some sunglasses to shield their eye holes. So, it, it, sure, it's cool and suave. I don't know that it's super effective technologically-wise, but I think it's kind of cool that they would uh, have those. And maybe that was like a cool joke, because like it's the cold virus who's cool. Get it? I think you know where I'm going with that. Yeah, so they start to not only have different types of murdery monstrosities, but they also start having unique characteristics sort of to their personalities, you know? And the one thing that I've really been enjoying throughout this whole game, beyond just the fact that it's a very solid tower defense game, is they really offer a whole bunch of really cool artwork. So look at this whole area. We're like, we're inside the intestines, and it basically looks like we're surrounded by colorful, like, sprinkly cookie dough. And there's actually, over here, there's like money. There's like a uh, check number two center. That's kind of neat. We'll start upgrading our turrets here. And the reason why I really wanted to have these uh, these two mortar launchers so close together is because they will allow me to construct missile launchers right here. This Gigundo missile launcher has a tremendous range and allows me to nuke down some particularly scuzzy fellows that will start appearing with this exclamation mark soon of tapeworms. You guessed it, big, nasty, sludge-crunking tapeworms. We'll just hit these boys with some uh, adrenaline to give their uh, little microbial bodies some energy. And even, you know, even each one of these towers has got its own really unique characteristics as they upgrade. You know, the police kiosk has got, like, the police stars and the little uh, 
machine gun howitzer. Looks like it's just got, like, eyeballs, but that's actually a little white microbial dude just chilling out there, doing his job, exploding things with his howitzer, and I think that's really neat. You know, it's, it's a really nice tower defense game that's really relaxing. You, I can really see myself just chilling out with this in the evening time, uh, just relaxing and murdering microbes and practicing my stratagems and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's a good combination. The other thing that I really like that these guys do is they like to throw different types of levels at you. You know, maybe there's dynamically changing terrain or environment, for example. Um, which you'll see in a few minutes here in this level. And the other thing is that they throw at you like fun for the heck of it levels where you use your specialty abilities more than you use anything else. So that means like your electricity which re which recharges really fast and your bombs and you only have a few limited towers and it's kind of like a kooky arcade level for you to fart around in. And I'm going to start upgrading this little turret here. And I believe I was talking about this spot here in the middle, and usually when there's a perfectly placed um, build zone in the middle of like four or more other build zones, that's because they intend for you to build one of these vitamin factories, which is a passive buff tower, which helps you to buff up a bunch of other towers, and then it can be upgraded to increase your range, your damage, or your uh, murder speed. And I'm going to have it um, spew out some toxic-looking grunginess in order to murder all these little uh, microbes faster. Because I am going to use this platform location as the perfect spot for additional missile launchers. You know, it, it might not be the Cold War anymore, but my, my human microbial wharf battle zone of a body doesn't know that. I plead the fifth when asked why I am building up nuclear arms inside of my intestines. I don't think any armistice agreements tell me I can't. So we're starting to see up. Here we go. These little puppy dog looking things. Those are rabies. And uh, they're so fast I'm having trouble even clicking on them. And the whole goal of rabies is to be like a dedicated blockade runner. Uh oh. And here we have the moment I've been telling you about. The enemies have been chewing out through my intestinal tract a new invasion point where they will attempt to insult my my insidey parts. And so this is why I built this uh, this location way in the back here to give myself additional breathing room from which to do battle. I'm actually going to build an additional defensive turret here, an additional police kiosk and tell them to go chill out here and immediately upgrade that to tier 2 and tell these police coppers to go up and reinforce the other ones and move my general back in between them a little bit to give uh, all these nasty puppies plenty of room to come get murdered. And then you see the tapeworms are starting to come out. And you'd think a tapeworm, because their bodies are full of eggs in the regular tapeworms, would uh, split into other little units, but rather than do that, they just, uh, they're just a pain in the butt to kill. See, my nuke didn't even barely phase them. And these these guys are the whole reason why I built like a zillion different uh, bombardment towers here. So that they wouldn't give me quite as much trouble. They're still kind of beating me up, so I'm actually going to upgrade this police kiosk one, one more time. And now they've, whoops, now they've turned into little red... Um, riot police with two batons, and they will absolutely samurai battle it out with all of these nasty microbials for the glory of my intestinal empire. I mean, you've always wanted to have an intestinal empire, right? You know, you can... Oh, looks like my general got kershmackled there for a minute. Good news, he respawns, because he's a platelet. There's like a zillion of him, ready to jump in and take the brunt of the fray. So he'll just take, sit there and schmack on them. And one other thing about the champions is you'll notice that underneath of him, rather than having a health bar in his little portrait at the top of the screen, he's actually got an experience bar. He actually levels up, which allows us to, as you saw before, buff up his stats so he does more damage, can take more hits, and is generally more useful for us for later levels. Because they do get 
pretty pretty dangerous pretty quickly. In the case of like all of these gnarly uh all these rabies that are trying to sneak past me. Not today, puppy dog. Let's see if I can upgrade this tower fast. Oh he got past me. Oh well, that's one health down. I won't get a I won't get a perfect score this this time around. But you know, that's life. It happens. Even to the best of us. We'll upgrade our secondary riot police to be extra spicy. And then uh, let's talk about building up some more defenses up here. But the other thing that you can build your mortar turrets into is this little sort of, it looks kind of like a gauge from your car. And this turns it into a swamp generator. And this can then be upgraded into an artificial wetland. And that's just like a damage over time poison zone. As minions enter that area, they get damaged. Which can be kind of handy if you're trying to just do a little bit extra damage before things reach your primarily defensive line. And after that, we will upgrade our little howitzer into a double-barreled howitzer. And eventually this goes up to, I think, triple or quadruple barrels before it eventually becomes a laser cannon. And I don't know about you, but I love laser cannons. This is very sci-fi-y. I've had a lot of fun with this game so far. Now, there are a couple things that I feel could be added to the game, but there's not really a lot of things that I feel this game is lacking. One of the things is, I wouldn't mind it is if my upgrade tablets that they give you allowed me to upgrade my towers in different ways. Like maybe my, let's for example say that my little howitzer guy here, maybe his bullets explode upon impact every so many hits there's a chance and it does a little bit of AOE damage as it shoots things. Or maybe this, this, you know, this electricity turret, this Tesla coil. Maybe it can arc and it can damage multiple units. Or maybe these turrets can be upgraded so that you can purchase an upgrade in the middle of combat that allows their missiles to become concussive, which rather than doing an even more damage would slow all the enemies hit by it, turning it not only into a heavy hitting a damaging turret, but also a bit of a utilitarian turret. I think that would be really spectacular. Now, giving me an, an ability to kind of mix and match the the sort of passive abilities and perks that my individual towers have to give me an, a, an increased way to personalize my tower defense experience. You know, maybe one of my towers can be turned into a poison tower. Maybe... One of them can ignite a target, and as it dies, it explodes, lighting all the targets around it on fire. Different things that would give me really simple, fun utilities to... I'm not sure that I would say completely customize my experience, but it would let me customize the tactics that I use in order to play in a very specific way. Like, maybe you can just do a bunch of turrets that do little bits of damage here and there, that do damage over time, and they die just as they reach the end, because I just love it as they see the taste of victory, and it's, it's snatched away from them. But other than that, I dig this game. You know, they've got the potential to add more maps through the in-game monetization system of the diamonds that you could unlock later. You know, maybe you go from your body to a female body, and then you've got to fight in, you know different sorts of female cells, like maybe you gotta fight in the ovaries, or some some other particular piece of the human anatomy, like maybe you go to her foot, because we didn't go to this guy's foot, we went down to his leg, and then we took a detour elsewhere. You got all sorts of options. And they've also got different sorts of champions, it seemed like they were planning to unleash upon us later down the road, to give us yet more options to play around with, which would be cool. So the, the sky's the limit with that. I also wouldn't mind it if there was, like, an upgrade to the game that unlocked additional turrets as well. Different types of towers that you could play with. Like, maybe instead of just a single missile silo, there's a third option that would allow you to upgrade to cluster missiles. That, instead of doing one big set of damage to one target, they can do, like, a carpet bombing effect all the way through the lane of monsters. I think that would be sweet. But as it stands right now, this is a fantastic game. I've had a lot of fun with this, playing all the way to the brain. And it offers a lot of replayability even right now, because as you play different levels, 
you can unlock higher levels of difficulty with more difficult cre creatures that challenge you to refine your tactics and to better utilize all of your resources. It's a good combination. I thoroughly recommend this game. Check them out. They're available for iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. All the devices you could possibly want. And they're one of the few games that I've checked out recently that runs beautifully right off the bat on Android 5.0. It's it's a really nice game. Check them out. These uh, these folks from Europe do a wonderful job. Love the artwork. Love the, the custom-made music. Love the turrets. Love the the characters. It's really fun, it's a really bubbly tower defense game, and it's also very uh, challenging at, at points, where they have different sorts of tricky things that can happen, like these units just appearing out of nowhere and invading you from the side. I love it. So, you'll find the links to this game in the description, and if you've got a cool game you'd like me to check out, or if you're an indie with your own title that you'd like to get a little bit extra press or its own review, let me know. And until next time, I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Have a good one, everybody, and toodaloo!